a joy and a privilege to be with, uh, with you again, wherever you are, in your homes, in your workshop, in the bars. I want to let you know that prayer is a vital part of our life. And prayer is transacting spiritual business. I want to encourage you, don't wait until you find yourself in difficult time to turn on the key of prayer. We were told last week that prayer is not the spare wheel, but is a driving wheel. And so we ask that every day we must turn on the key of prayer and talk to the maker and ask him to guide us and protect us. Whatever we need, he's there. He's, he said his ears are not too heavy to hear us. So we welcome you this time. And we pray that your lives will be blessed from this program. So stay tuned. God bless you. I, I think it's Dr. Luke records in him we live, we move, and we have our being, our existence. And uh, we want to say from the inception, regardless of how powerful you might be as a person, the position you might hold in society, in the church, wherever, you might be someone of great reputation, someone who is considered to be of tremendous value. So, you must always remember these words in Him. We live, we move, and we have our existence. In other words, we can't survive without God. And how do we tap into God, that power that He offers? It is through our prayers and petitions and supplications as we move in that direction. The God we serve, He is responsive. I think it was Isaiah who says, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. Mm -hmm. The psalmist said, Bless the Lord at all times, and his praise should continue to be in our mouth. All of these you know, situations that we have identified, they are testimonies to the fact that when we touch that kind of resource, powerful resource in God, we could experience transformation and it's it's wonderful to see that we have a group of people all around this country during this time recognizing the fact that in him we live and we have our being and for that particular reason the prayer conference is going on right now all around this country where men and women and children they are touching base with God to see a transformation and a change for the better in this nation gentlemen Father in heaven, as we are gathered here today, we honor you as the God who loves people. This is a gathering of people. And should we leave you out, it is abandoning the people we pledge to serve. O oh God, come into our midst, therefore, and administrate in our dialogue and our decision making. Let this gathering not only be one of seeing familiar faces and chatter, but one in which the Holy Spirit is allowed to function. We seek your guidance in the way forward. We desire to execute your will in whatever role we are called to play in, this, in the building of this beautiful nation. Let justice, let mercy, let humility guard our thought, life, and action. Let national hope and sustained growth be restored. Help us, O oh God, to see beyond the walls of our individual structures and families and familiar faces to a picture, a greater picture that you are painting for us. We seek and honor the partnership between God and man. And though and through the sacrificial work of Jesus Christ, sanctify and anoint us all for service. This we pray in no other name but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know, I just read a portion of, of a prayer 
that was said nationally that reflects the heart and the mind of what we desire in this country. And over this, the last week, in the city, in New Amsterdam, in Corinthine Warbies, in Linden, in West Demerara, on the Essequibo coast, folks gathered and prayed, like you heard my brother said. Pray, praying for that line of communication that is necessary for the existence and the sustenance of man between the physical world and the spiritual world to be maintained. Pray that the heart of God and the mind of God will remain in our midst. Pray that demonic forces don't have the authority and the privilege to manipulate our environment. Pray that our young people and our, our youths in general will get an opportunity to succeed in spite of the difficulties that are thrown before them. Pray that we all will receive the blessing and favor of God. And oh, what a wonderful time we have had over the past week. Gentlemen, George Dunn. You know, um, both Pastor, uh, Pastor and myself and Pastor Hudson underscore the importance of prayer. And you know, you mentioned about keeping the lines of communication open. Um, we live in an age and time where um, cell phones, particularly high-end ones, you know, they grab the attention of so many people. But oftentimes, you know, you find people who have those high-end cell phones. They are able to make calls or to send messages simply because they don't have credit. Um, our prayer to God must be our lifeline. And praying keeps the line of communication open. So whenever there are problems or issues, we can always call on Him. We shouldn't treat prayer only when we have a problem or when there's some devastating situation in our life. But prayer must be constant, it must be every day, it must be a feature of our life. So we don't just call him, you know, when there's a problem. You know, the prayer conference is, it, you know, it's held during the, um, the past week. You know, there wasn't much fun, fear and all of that. Well, we have relatively pe relative peace and calm in the country. So sometimes people might say, there's no need to pray because you know, things seem to be going well. But not so. The word of God admonishes us that men are always, always is not conditional. Didn't say only when you have problems. But we must pray continuously, continually to God. Yeah. You know one of the uh, portion of scriptures that really impacted me during the prayer conference is found in Isaiah chapter 62 verses 6 and 7 and it reads I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day nor night ye that make mention of the Lord keep not silence and give him no rest till he establish until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. It is very important for us to understand that prayer is not just for a time or for a season, but as the scripture reminds us, that men are always to pray and not to give up. And so I believe as watchmen, God has set and give us this responsibility to watch over this nation and as we pray, this is such a tremendous, this scripture really, really impacted me. God is giving us an opportunity. He is saying to us, he will not be tired and weary of our cry. And so, Guyanese, we have this tremendous opportunity that God is saying to us, give him no rest. Let us bombard the throne room of God. Let us call upon God day and night. As watchmen. You know, I like, thank you, Pastor Paul. I, I, I like, as you read that scripture, I couldn't help but reflecting on the prayer session in the city. 
I remember the very first day, the opening day, where as you found as we found the the different groups, denominations coming together for prayer. It 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 it, it was such an exhilarating experience where we all came to call on God, call on the true room of heaven to intervene into the affairs of, 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 of men. We were from different backgrounds, different denominations, but yet still we all found this value of praying and praying together. Um, it, for me, that is significant. It represents the, the face of the church, the, the, the body of Christ. And uh, when the presenter, Bishop Messiah, spoke, um, he, really, he really touched on the old importance of us hearing from God. Because you can be actively involved in spiritual matters, but the line of communication is cut. So you don't hear accurately what God is actually saying. And you attempt to live this life and make decisions based on your senses. And, you know, I couldn't help but laugh because he plays that in the background of the, the experience of Jeremiah and Ananiah in the book of Jeremiah when God made a prophetic word about what he is doing at this time. And how important it is to know what God is doing. And uh, as God declared what he's doing, one probably got up and said, no, God is not doing that. God is doing X, you know. And only time revealed what God was actually saying and to recognize that the prophet Jeremiah was accurate. And so as we speak, and as we seek the face of God, the line of communication becomes clearer. And you have a sense of what God is actually doing. And I think that is what we did. One of the things we did. Something you said earlier, Pastor Sam. Understanding the mind and the will of God. And I recall the, the chairman as he spoke on the opening day. And he alluded to Jeremiah and Hananiah. Uh, what is critical here is the fact that sometimes when we are not in tune, we allow our emotions to get the better of us. And we say things that will be appealing to others, not reflecting the mind and the will of God. I personally believe that in order for us to truly understand the mind and the will of God, we've got to be spending time in His Word knowing what God expects of us. I, I recall Nehemiah as he was rebuilding. He went before God because he was going to put back structures in place. And he went before God for God's leading and direction. Even though he was concerned about what was happening in the nation, he didn't allow his emotions to take, get the better of him. He went to God first. And when we go to God, we allow God to have his way and to lead and direct our every move so that we can be indeed displaying the mind and the will of God in what we do. I think that Andrew, Andrew Maurice said, prayer is not, an, and this is what we're talking about here, he says prayer is not a, a monologue, but it's a dialogue. God's voice in response to mind is the most essential part. And so, uh, when we pray, we don't pray empty words. We, we don't pray to impress. This is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's, it's a conversation. And uh, if you're involved in a conversation, if you're speaking, then you have to listen. Um, because obviously, the person you are having a conversation with will be speaking back to you. Yeah. And you know, last night, um, I was on the, 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 the West, West Bank um, of the Marara, and it was so it, it was so exciting to see children um, lots of children in the prayer meeting young people and and the, they were firing up and the, um, one of the things that came out of, 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 of the prayer meeting at the end of the prayer meeting some persons were asked who prayed they were asked to say what God said to you 
clearly, you know, they have an understanding of a conversation. So uh, sometimes, you know, we could find ourselves in a situation where we're praying and we feel that, that you know, we have done a good job because we have just prayed up. But then, what did God say? And, and, and it, it calls for being attentive and being in tune with what you, what you were doing because it is a conversation. And so, believe me, at the end of a prayer session, God could actually minister to you and say, look, really, in relation to what you've been praying about, this is the situation. So we have to pay attention also. And it was so happy to, I was happy to see young people actually testified, you know, what they heard. That's at the end of the, um, the, the prayer session, what they heard in terms of what God was saying. You know, when we, when we pray, we talk to God. And um, prayer is like planting a seed. You talk to God about issues that are before you. And in the future you see God revealing those things that you would have spoken to him about. A particular part of that model prayer that says, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Hence the reason that we need to find out from heaven what we need to bring to the earth. And the only way we can do such a thing, we, we need to talk to the creator that is in heaven, that has got the blueprint of what he wants in the earth. And when that connection is made via prayer, we see things manifested before us that God wants. And it's not so much about what we want, but it's about what he wants to do in the earth. Because he's got the best plan. And when we pray, he has the opportunity to release that plan. You know, Pat Hudson touched on a, on a critical component when he spoke about listening. You know, um, sometimes we are so, you know, Wesley talked about it too. We are so emotionally charged up that in our prayer we rush before God and we just we empty ourselves as it were. And we just list, 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 list what you know we're concerned about. But we pray because we believe God is able to intercede, He's able to intervene, and He's able to change things around. So the critical aspect of it is that we need to listen to what God is saying and not just fill the prayer with <coughs> what we are saying. But we need to be really listening here. Because we want to, after we would have completed, or when we would have finished, we want to ensure that whatever we do thereafter is in keeping with what he said and not what, you know, we want to do. So it is critical that as we pray, we listen to the Spirit of God and hear what he's saying so that we can move and we can walk. You know, I love, the, uh, I love the, Lord's, the Lord's Prayer, as I call it, in the, in the book of John, chapter 17, when Jesus himself prayed. And the first thing he prayed about, he thanked God because God has given him authority over all flesh. Yeah. And he was concerned about flesh having eternal life. I believe that the more people are transformed, the better society becomes. Because when I look at my own life, I could have had so much trouble in this world. But I'm a better person because of my salvation. You spoke and about then, one minute, Pastor, and then thereafter, when we go to that prayer that I would like to call the believer's prayer, the model that Jesus give, that generally people call the Lord's Prayer, when he says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We're asking for God's purpose, as Pastor Jackman Adam Berti just now, that God's purpose must come to the fruition in our life. <coughs> Let God's will be done. Let us submit ourselves 
to God's purpose and God's will. Really and Sister David, really got me excited just when you spoke about translation. You know, we were in um, in the East um, one night. We were we were in New Amsterdam in Roosevelt, um, Roosevelt and in quarantine. Um, um, Corribata. And uh, the speaker at Rosal, I stayed at the session at Rosal. The speaker at Rosal spoke about exactly what you were talking about. Um, but in New Amsterdam, I, the, the people surely they were, they were in choose to pray. The turtle, I didn't stay, but the turtle seemed to be a, a very strong one. And in but let me talk about Rosal quickly. It was all the, 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 the speaker said, you know, I was a drugs man. I used to in, get myself involved in drugs and um, involved in lots of fights until I came and met this God you be talking about and developed that relationship with him. And one day, you know, there, I, there's a big man, big stroppy man came, was walking up to see me. And as, I, as, I, as he was coming, I knew him very, very well. And um, I, I, I became fearful because I remembered an experience when I was a, when I was a sinner with him, and on the drugs, how I floored him. And this man is walking straight up to me, and I'm watching him eyeball to eyeball. But I ain't sure what to do. He is so massive; he could talk me. I don't know how I, I floored that man on the drugs. And when, I, when he got close to me, he said, grab me. He said, oh boy, I love you. I love how you have become. You are a good man now. And he attributed all of that transformation through that relationship you're talking about with God himself. And I thought it was a tremendous blessing. Indeed, through prayer, transformation is possible. I met one of the strongest worshipers. One, you got to help me here. One of the strongest worshipers. An, an Indian girl. I, I've never heard worship like this in all my life. Beautiful, beautiful worshiper. Worship. Yeah, but I was privileged <coughs> to be a part of that meeting in Rosal, and we really want to thank the brethren on the quarantine there at JC, JC Singh Dam, you know, Chan Singh Dam mm -hmm. in, in Rosal there. It was such a tremendous blessing to see Guyanese from all walks of life as they came as people came into that building as we prayed and as we believed God, you felt the presence of God in that house. And we really, really want to thank the brethren in the quarantine for really supporting the, the prayer conference. It was a tremendous blessing. You know, prayer can move the unmovable. It can mend the unmendable. It can break the unbreakable. Very often, we wait until we are in big trouble to start to pray, as my brothers alluded to before. But sometimes we have to recognize that, well, not sometimes, at all times we have to recognize that we must be appreciative for even when things are going well, that we say thanks to God. Amen. Now, as we talk about prayer, a lot of us might be thinking, um, but I mean, I can't remember those prayer in the prayer books. Um, I know they used to say this, but I cannot remember, you know something? You don't need to remember those prayers because prayer should really come from your heart. It's a conversation. Just like how you chat with a human, your father, you sit down with God and you say to him, this is how I feel. You know, the thing about prayer is that we should always be honest. Don't try to fool God and tell God that, that you're happy when you're not happy. You think he doesn't know? As Pastor David alluded to the, the prayer of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus had a little fear when he saw the cross. He said, you know, I ain't too feeling too good about this thing. You mean, Father, can you take this thing away from me? But then you remember this purpose and you say, you know what? Yeah, not my will, but your will be done. What I'm getting at here is that as you interact with God in prayer, be honest with him. Say exactly how you feel. If you know you feel you're going to go overboard, you feel like you want to kill somebody, you feel like you want to steal the people money, tell God the truth. I'm well, certain it wasn't fear that Jesus had. <laughs> <laughs> you know, prayer, prayer is, is, is an acid test of, as we were speaking, it's an, it's an acid test of our devotion. Um, it, it tells how devoted we are. And sometimes, you know, we could say that some people are, you know, they might be crazy. 
But they're not crazy. There's some people who are always in a mood of praying wherever they are. You know, you might be going down the road, you might be sitting in your office, and you feel that desire and that need to pray. And, and basically, it's a testimony to who you are and how devoted you are to God. So if, even if you're a believer and you know, you're just going along, you don't wake up in the morning and give God thanks for a brand new day. Uh, you don't speak to your God in the morning, in the evenings. You, you know, we, we have to be speaking to God every time because it is an asset test of our devotion. Really and truly, if you want to know who you are as a believer, check and see how many times you pause to, to, to give God praise and thanks and you'll know exactly who you are. It's not how many times you, you come to church and what you do and so on. Your relationship with God is, is, is tested in your prayer, how devoted you are with Him. You know, the folks in this, you by heard, it was a tremendous blessing. The youths were really, really blessed. Dr. Mugawan, who ministered in this, you what a blessing. Pastor Lee, quickly, how was Linden? <laughs> um, Linden was, was great. That might be an understatement. But God spoke to um, those of us who were gathered there. And, you know, God really showed us from His Word um, the importance of us as a church, um, nationally or church in, in Region 10, how it, um, it's important that we embrace the community and we seek to influence um, change in that society and we ourselves are um, being change agent so that we can reflect and we can bring the kingdom of God into the hearts and lives of men in that community. So the community um, over time would be reflective of what God is um, um, to, the, to, to that society. Each one of us needs that relationship with God. You don't need to pray only when you're in difficulty. Prayer is a, a lifeline. Prayer, rather prayer is more than a lifeline. Prayer is a relationship with God. And I pray that you and I, as we contemplate all that we have heard today, we'll take this very moment and just pause and give him thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Let him know how appreciative you are over his covering, mm -hmm. over his provision, over his keeping power. And as you do that, you're cultivating a relationship with him. I pray that this prayer will not just be for this week, but for the rest of your life, you will continue to honor your relationship with God. This is choices. Your whole life is a sum of your choices. God bless you. We thank you for joining us this evening. We want to remind you to join us for our special services at First Assembly. I'm Salisha on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.